Good morning. Hope you're having a wonderful day. So we are going to be talking a little bit about my tomato plants here. So a little while back, I was uh, talking about how my garden has kind of turned into a bit of a jungle back here. And of course, obviously it has. And that was because I just did not have time to prune. I haven't had time to keep up with the garden and maintain it properly. Now in that video, I was talking about how even if you don't have time to prune and maintain your garden properly, uh, which of course is gonna result in it not growing at an optimal level, to go ahead and do it anyway. And that opinion has not changed. If you're in a position where you can start a garden, start learning how to grow your own vegetables, but maybe you're not going to be able to really maintain it at an optimal level, um, go ahead. You, you should totally do that, absolutely. However, this video is gonna show the other side of that as far as, okay, wasn't able to prune, wasn't able to keep up with it. Tomatoes are now blushing and ready for harvest. Now we get to deal with the difficulties that can come with not pruning properly. Now, one of the issues that I've come across not being able to keep up with the garden back here is when I'm trying to harvest, getting to the tomatoes can prove challenging. So one of the things we're experiencing is some of the plants are of course tied to the trellis. Some of them are not. Some of them are tied about halfway up. Some of them are tied all the way up to the top. But the plants of course have grown above the trellis level. And what this has caused is some of the plants, of course as they got bigger and the branches would get bigger, they would go ahead and start to fall over. Okay, They didn't break or nothing but they started to fall over. And then as that plant got larger, that next set fell over. And then the next branch, and then the next branch, until eventually the whole plant just kind of folded in on itself and it created these layers, okay? And of course, towards the bottom of these layers are tomatoes, so I have to get down underneath there. And so that has actually caused a couple of issues. One being, of course, it makes it a little more difficult to get to those tomatoes. The other thing though, and I think it's because of limited space, a lot of the tomatoes have been smaller. Now I've noticed this mostly with the Romas because this, the, the Roma tomatoes has uh, suffered from this the most. The tomatoes are small. Uh, they're actually taking a little longer to blush. Uh, because they're not getting that sunlight and that airflow that they really need. And again, it just makes it more difficult to grab them. Now, getting to those tomatoes has caused another issue when moving them. So tomato plants can be a bit on the fragile side. They like to snap. They'll either do it right at the knuckle, so you'll see the stem going up, then you'll see where a branch is at, and it kind of forms a knuckle right there. And even further down the branch, where it starts to kind of, you know, split off into, you know, its leaves and such, you'll have almost like little knuckles there too, and it breaks there. And now, the problem with that is, you know, I've had some where, okay, it'll break at the very tip. It's not really that big of a deal. I've had others, uh, that have broken further down the branch closer to the stem and on the outside part of it you've got fruit you've got tomatoes that have set but then I broke the branch trying to move it to get two ripe tomatoes well now these green tomatoes don't have a branch or a vine to grow on some of those I was still able to save. Uh, they had started to blush, and so I just let them finish ripening indoors. Uh, some of them weren't even at the blushing stage yet, and they ended up just 
shriveling up and I was unable to use them. So that's another one. So another issue, um, aside from the plants kind of layering on top of each other and making it difficult to not only get to the ripe tomatoes, but sometimes even see that they're there. Um, some of the ones that I see, it's because I happen to be on the other side of the trellis and I'm you know, down in there, I'm digging away and I can actually see sometimes through the trellis on the other side. Now the problem with that is now I have to go around and try to kind of, I have an idea of where that tomato is at, but I still have to find it. So that in and of itself is a challenge. The other one is the walkways, or in this case, kind of a lack of. So in between each of the rows, of course, there's a little bit of a walkway. And if these were trellised properly or tied up properly, pruned properly, I would have more space to be able to actually move and get to the plants and take care of them as needed problem right now is of course that's not the case the case is these are spilling over into the walkways I have to watch where I'm stepping because I don't want to step on the the plants themselves and it just makes it of course that much more difficult to harvest now another thing that has happened um, because of all this so again like I mentioned earlier uh, some of the plants are tied up some of them are not. So this whole row here for the most part is not tied up to the trellis. The other side though, for the most part is. Now I've got plants that are growing through the trellis and whatnot, but I don't know if you can see it, but there's this bend that happens here because all of the plants on that side are pulling on the fencing that I'm using for a trellis. And of course, it's because of all the weight of the plants tied to this thing, all pulling to one side. So what's gonna happen now is once these plants are done and I begin clearing out this grow space, I'm going to have to tighten up the, the trellising here to make sure it's ready for the next set of plants. Uh, whether those are more tomato plants or if it's something else, I'm gonna have to make sure these are set. Now, one thing I'm actually going to do to help with that, and I did that with these ones here, um, this particular row, I actually have some rebar that a friend of ours gave us. And so in the middle here, I've got two additional pieces of rebar that I drove into the ground and attach the trellising to, which helped kind of give it some additional rigidity. And so I think I'm going to go ahead and do that to the trellis that's falling over. So I'll tighten that up, make sure that of course, you know, the posts and everything are, you know, reset. And then I'll add some of that rebar in and I'll just drive it in just like you would a, a fence post. And that'll help kind of give it some rigidity and hopefully prevent this kind of stuff from happening again. Now, another thing that I'm going to do on my next round of tomatoes is actually do a different type of, I guess you could say trellising. Now I'm still gonna utilize the fence lines like I have been, but as far as how they're tied up, I'm going to do something different. I've been seeing these different types of methods like a Florida weave and things of that nature. So you take your line and you run it across the entire row from like fence post to fence post, okay? And then as the tomatoes grow up, you just keep adding an entire new row. And so I think I'm gonna try something like that uh, this next go around. And I think that might help keep the entire row uniform for one. Uh, the other one, of course, is the fact that I'm not having to get in there and actually tie these off to the wire itself, uh, which might actually save some time and frustration because you know I'm having to get in there, I'm trying to hold up the plant, I'm trying to tie it off, 
and said, I'm just going to be running an entire line and just making sure it's even across the board. Weave it in and out somehow just to kind of add to, you know, its ability to hold up the plants. And of course, pruning. I do plan on spending quite a bit more time out in the garden, you know, uh, this upcoming season. I've already started spending more time in the garden now. Uh, so you're going to be seeing a lot more of that uh, as far as, you know, learning what we're doing out here and continuing to just get better at this. Now, another issue is pest and disease damage. Now, thankfully, I really haven't had that big of an issue with pests or disease this year, but it's still a possibility. And the problem with having your tomato plants growing like this, just all wild and haphazard, is it makes it that much more difficult to spot when your plant is actually struggling and having an issue. Um, you know, if it's something like uh, watering or something to that effect, a lot of times you can kind of tell with that one. Uh, but the, even that could be uh, more difficult. But when it comes to like if, if you're having any kind of pest uh, issues towards the base of the plant, well, I can't even see the base of my plant. So I don't know if that's happening. Uh, if there's any kind of like a powdery mildew going on, I may miss that. Um, one thing I've been having an issue with on one of the plants has Dang. The joys of living in the city, right? My goodness. Anyway. One of the things I've been having an issue with has been blossom end rot. Now it's really only been like one section that has had it and it's not every tomato, um, but I would say a good majority of the tomatoes off of this area has been having blossom end rot. And unfortunately, I don't actually know why. Um, you know, I've been fertilizing them and making sure they've got water uh, it could have been something when I planted it. Maybe it's just not getting enough calcium or some other uh, mineral deficiency that it's having. I'm really not sure, especially considering it's the only one, or it's the only section that is having this issue. And I pretty much take care of them all the same, which, well, to be honest, <laughs> hasn't been much. So. You know, those are issues. Those are things that you have to keep in mind when trying to grow, but you don't prune, uh, especially, like, again, like with tomatoes. But, like I said before, don't let that stop you. At the end of the day, we're just trying to make sure that we're learning from what we're doing and that next time we do it better. And each time... Maybe we just do it just a little bit better. Even if it's just one step here, one extra step taken, you know, when it comes to pruning your plants early to get that good spacing between the container and your trellis, if you're doing tomatoes on a trellis. Uh, maybe it's spending that extra few moments on the weekends, you know, making sure to, you know, take care of your suckers and things of that nature and keep it under control. We're just learning. We're in the beginning stages. We ain't experts at this. We're just learning. And so the goal is to just do it better next time. Keep getting better. Because as we continue to do this, we'll get better. We'll learn what has happened, what happens if we don't do something, what happens if we do do something. Just do it better. So that's going to do it for me today. Um, I've got a handful of tomatoes I still see throughout here, so I'm going to go grab those real quick. We've got quite a bit that we've picked this morning with you, so uh, I've got to get these inside. I think I'm actually going to be trying my hand at making tomato sauce. And so we'll be using a combination of Roma and uh, cherry tomatoes. and. We'll see what we can do about actually getting that turned into sauce. 
but that's going to be for another video so thank you for hanging out with me this morning thank you for, for supporting us and this channel thank you for following us on this journey thank you for hitting that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one